All right, what's going on everybody? We are out here today at Stony Creek. I wanted to go through and show you what a really good practice session would look like. So over the next couple of videos, we're gonna talk about having a really good practice session. And we're gonna to start today on the putting green. Now I know that's gonna be everybody's favorite and everybody loves to practice the putting. I know I do, but you're gonna learn a couple of concepts that you're gonna to take to every practice that you do for whatever area of the game that you're working on. So keep that in mind as you're watching the specific things we're doing. But without further ado, Let's show you how to practice like a pro. Hey everybody, Scott Oden coming at you. We are out here, we are at Stony Creek. So again, we're gonna show you how to practice like a pro. And so there are gonna be a couple of things that we need to do if we are gonna have a really good practice session. So again, today we're working with the putter. So the first thing we have to do is we're gonna to have to set some goals, all right? So what type of goals can I have with putting when I'm practicing? Well, you know, I think a lot of people know, hey, I was supposed to make the ball in the hole or I'm supposed to lag it up close. That's fine, but we have to get a little bit more specific in how we're working on things. So there's three main things that I like to look at if we're gonna work on our game and our putting specifically. So the first thing being is we need to know if we're starting the ball in line. So that's gonna be the first thing that we set up. The second thing is we've gotta be able to control our speed as we're going through and hitting putts. And then the third thing is going to be, do we know how to read a green? And then lastly, we put all of that together and that's how we make putts. So we have to work on those areas and know, hey, I'm good at starting the ball in line. I'm good at getting my speed under control or three, I'm good at reading the greens. And if you're practicing, you have to know I'm getting better at those areas and I have to know if I'm not as good at what I wanna be at for those areas. So let's start talking about it. Let's go ahead. We're gonna start with our start line first. Let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna work on start line, okay? So now, when we are setting up drills and we're doing practice, one of the most important things that we need is feedback. So when I watch people practice, I see people on the range all the time and they're hitting balls and they put in the hours and they put in the time, but the issue is they don't have feedback to know if they are doing whatever skill they're trying to work on correctly. So I've got a station set up here where we're gonna work on our start line feedback. So I've got, you know, a five, six foot putt. You could do a little bit longer one if you want, but the key here is I basically wanna know what the putt is doing. If you have a straight putt, you can do that and find that one. For me here, we have a putt that I'm very comfortable with. I've hit this one a lot. It breaks a little bit to the right. So I know exactly where that ball is going to start and where I'm gonna to need to hit it to make it. So that's all you really need. You gotta know what the start line is supposed to be so you can try and hit it. Now, a couple of things I like to use if we're gonna get working on a start line. That means that the club face or the putter face really needs to be in a good spot. So we need to get the putter face lined up straight ahead and we need to keep it straight ahead. So I like using one, this putting mirror. This one's from Short Game Gains which we do have classes coming up, make sure you check those out. Um, and then I also like using a start line gate, which this is also from Short Game Gains. Um, both of these devices together are gonna help me where I'm gonna get over the ball. I'm gonna know that I'm set up the way I want to. I've got the putter lined up, I've got everything working. So I'm getting a good feel of how everything looks for me to be aiming where I think I should be. Then the second thing is, I'm just working on trying to get the ball to start for the first 12 to 18 inches or so, okay? And when I do that, what's gonna happen is that ball will roll right through the gate. Now it should go in the hole. If I don't have the read correct, it wouldn't, or let's say I leave it short, I wouldn't, or even because this is breaking, if I hit it a little too hard, it wouldn't break. But the big thing is, can we just get the ball started online? In theory, I could do this without even a hole if you wanted to, okay? So we get ourselves set up, we get the putter, set up, I get everything going, I get a feel with the mirror of my setup and just keeping that consistent. And then from there, we stroke the putt, obviously go right through the gate, and that means I can start the ball online. I also have one other thing that I like to add to the station, which is I've got two tees on the sides. That is just gonna make sure that I'm hitting the ball on the middle of the putter. That's a drill you see Tiger Woods use a lot. Um, it's just something to keep you consistent. And this is a drill I will do a lot to start off my session. 
Again, making sure I'm covering that start line as I'm going through and hitting putts. Obviously, if I hit the gate or if I were to hit the tees on the outside, that means the putter face is getting off. I need to work on keeping that putter more square as I go through my stroke. So it's a great drill that you can do to work on that start line and it's good feedback to know if you are doing it or not. All right, so then the second part of putting then, after we do, you know, I'll usually do about 10 to 15 minutes working on that start line. Now we gotta move on to speed. So again, I'm gonna need a couple more things that are gonna help me understand if I'm getting my speed correct. Now, there are a few ways you can do this, but I'm gonna show you the way that I like to practice, and I think this is a little bit more systematic. Um, first thing you're gonna need is a ghost hole. Again, this comes from the short game gains kit. I talk about it a lot because basically it gets everything that I've had, I've had a variety of these types of things for the years, and now it just comes in an easy kit, so I like that. But the reason I use a ghost hole, I'm gonna throw it really anywhere, okay? What we're looking for is, I don't really care if I make it, I want that ball to roll, and I wanna see what the speed is. So if I'm working on my speed, I don't wanna be hitting at the hole, because if it hits the hole and goes in, I don't know how far it went by. I don't know if I had good speed or not. Now. The other thing we're gonna do is, we gotta start by looking at how far of a putt we got. So I'm gonna walk off about nine feet here. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna mark a T. Now I know I've got a nine footer. And the other thing that I'm gonna to need to do is I like to practice with these slope grade roll charts. I've talked about these before. I've also already done the stimp read. If you don't know how to stimp your green, if you're gonna work on speed control, you gotta know the stimp of your green. So yeah, there's a little bit of work, but this you know, three minutes of work is gonna make the next 10 minutes of your practice really, really good. And then that's all you really need. You don't need to practice for an hour. You can practice for 10, 15 minutes and you're gonna get really, really good. So I've got my chart. I need to do my read and say, all right, hey, this putt, about nine feet, I'm gonna call it about three inches uphill. It's definitely uphill. So when I do that and I go nine feet, three inches up, I know that this ball needs to roll six feet after the first second. So what I'm gonna do is just walk off one, two, get pretty close there. Okay, got that. Now this chart is designed to hit the ball one foot past the hole. So. One last thing we can do, I can either use another T or I can use a chalk pen. I've got actually a foot long level here. So I already know my distance. I'm gonna just put a chalk line right there. So I've got a little line and these chalk pens, they just wash off. So it's not gonna hurt the grass or anything. And we can just set that at the side. And now I've got a station where all right, I'm gonna work on my speed. I know what the desired speed is because I'm trying to get the ball to travel to this tee after one second. That should get me to the hole and not past this line, which for you on the camera, let's just mark it. This is the other way you can do it, is just mark it with a T, and we'll try it out. All right, so we got our setup. So now when I'm working on my speed control, it's a little bit more structured and what I'm trying to do is get a feel for, hey, this is that one second, okay? One second to that red T. So we're gonna go one, 1,000, one, 1,000, one, 1,000. And I'm really just trying to get my count, get a feel, and we'll go one, 1,000. So that was way too fast. So that ball went past our T. When I finished the one, 1,000 in my head, I probably had it right about here. So actually, sorry, I had it right about here, and that means that it was gonna be a little bit fast. I need to feel like I'm gonna get it a little bit short as we go, okay? So let's do it again. One, 1,000, that was a little slow, okay? Let's see, once we hit this, let's get it. 1,000, one, 1,000, one, 1,000, one, 1,000. Little slow, but getting better. And so now, as I'm working through this, I'm actually, you know, hey, I've got goals and I've got feedback if it's good speed. Again, what I see most of the time is people will just hit these putts, and I did this too. You know, you would say, hey, all those putts weren't too bad, but, you know, that's not gonna be good enough when we're practicing, if I'm really trying to hone my skills, because 
you're always gonna get a little bit worse. People always say, hey, Scott, I get worse when I go to the course. Well, that's true. That means you gotta practice harder than when you play. So I've gotta get this dialed in and get to my zone as we're going through. So we're gonna go ahead, do it one more time. One, one thousand. One, one thousand. That one was pretty good. And you can see I'm right on my white line right here. Okay, and that was a good putt. And now I've got some feedback that I can work. Now I can do that a couple times, and then what I would actually do is get off of my spot, let's pick a new putt, get the speed again, find my chart, and then I would just work on that putt as we go. But I would again do this for like 10, 15 minutes of working on hitting my spot that I'm picking, trying to get that speed dialed in. All right, and then the final part that we need to start working on is green reading. This is by far the one that people don't work on. They just assume they'll be able to get up and go read a green. Uh, if you're really trying to make putts or get the ball lagging close to the hole, you really need to work on your green reading a little bit. And it's used to be a lot harder to have some feedback with green reading, but now we have tools and systems that actually help us with this. So the way that we've kind of done this in the past is actually using something like this, which is just a digital level. So you can see I can just tilt it and get my percentage of slope. And so all we would do is basically work our way around the green. And you might have seen you know, golfers doing this. And I don't even need a ball to work on my green reading. All I need to do is decide on what's going on and kind of give myself a little look. And so let's say I was gonna hit a putt all the way over to this hole here. Okay, so what I would do is I would say, all right, hey, I'm gonna read this. And what you would do is decide, all right, hey, how much slope do I think there is? And so what came along was this thing called aim point. What they started having you do was actually look at the percentage of slope that you were working with, okay? So I would, what we would do then is actually take this level and set it on the ground and get our read. Okay, and we would just work our way around. So what I would do is actually come up with a number. All right, I'm gonna say this is a 1% slope. When I look at that, it actually is less than that. There's actually not a lot of slope here. So this putt's pretty straight. So I would say, all right, hey, I'm over reading the putt. Okay, now I've got a feel for that one. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna actually do a different one. Let's go over here. Okay, so that wasn't 1%. I feel a little bit more slope. We are breaking the other direction, but I'm gonna call this one 1%. So let's go ahead, set it down. We're gonna see what our number is. That we've got. This is actually a 1.91% slope, so a 2% slope. Now, the thing that you get is you start reading and start understanding, all right, hey, this is how much slope this is. This is how much this is. Now, what you see pros do on TV, you might see this, is they do what's called aim point express. And this is where they would hold up some fingers. And what you're doing is actually, this would be a 2% slope. And you're actually reading to this edge. This edge is cutting the hole in half. That gives you your point where you're aiming, okay? Now, you have to practice that. You have to give yourself a little bit of a calibration every time you play to make sure you're doing it right. Now, what I like is, I've talked about this device before, but this is the slope grade, okay? So what I like is with this app and this device, what I can do is set this up, okay? And I've got my, once I set up some of the variables, so let's say I've got my distance, we're gonna call this, let's see here nine feet we'll call this about seven feet okay i'm gonna say this is about one inch downhill and now i've got my percent but the thing i can do here is if i just put the two percent in i'll know it's a three inch from the left edge putt but now what i can actually do using the ball marker is let's just check it i can just click read putt and here's what it gives me okay so it's actually saying I was a little bit off. It's a pretty flat putt. It's not downhill at all. And it's also just telling me it's four inches from the left edge. And it's telling me that it is a 2% slope. So it's actually verifying the 2% slope, but because it's not downhill, 
I actually have to play a little more break than I had just using the level. So I think you get a little bit more exacting reads because it's just taking into account everything as we go through. So again, what you can do is work your way around the green and just get a feel. Hey, I want to look at this putt. What do I think it's going to do? I feel like it's this much break, this much slope. This is where I would play it. Place the ball marker down, see how you do. That's your feedback for green reading that we can now test. Now, obviously, the thing that we can do is we have to put all of this together. So that would be my practice. I would spend 10 to 15 minutes going over the start line, 10 to 15 minutes hitting some putts, working on my speed, moving around a little bit. Then I would spend about five to 10 minutes just getting some reads, okay, getting some reads. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab one golf ball and I'm going to work on hitting some putts, going through everything. I wanna start it online. I want to have good speed. I want to see if I get the, right, the read right. So I can use my ball marker in practice for that if you want, but I would try it first, then go ahead and hit the putt, see if you can put everything together. I would go through and get my speed, everything just like I would when I'm on the golf course. Not only will it make me more proficient and quicker at it on the golf course, I know a lot of people think it might take a while to do this, but in reality, it doesn't. I don't think so. It's just a matter of, are you good at it? And then you're able to go. So let's go show you a putt and let's actually hit one and just show you what I would do. And I would practice this for nine holes on the green or 18 holes and just see what I can score. All right, so I've got here to the green. Let's go over how this works with a putt. Again, I've been using this in my last couple tournament rounds. I've actually had strokes gained in both of these rounds uh, on the positive side, which is really good for me, uh, how it has been of late. So uh, we get up here, here's how it would look, okay? So I'd mark my ball, obviously have a coin in a tournament, but here it's a tee is fine. First thing I'm gonna do is, you know, while we're doing this, I'm gonna take a look, get the distance of the putt. So I'm gonna guesstimate that this is about 12 feet. Again, these are all guesses. I'm also looking and saying, okay, it's uphill maybe two inches. So right there, I go to my chart, 12 inches, or two inches up, sorry, 12 feet. That's gonna tell me I need to hit this ball seven feet after one second. From there, gonna get my read. And this is where, again, you see pros walking, straddling the line. All they're doing is feeling that slope like they're their own personal level. I'm gonna call it 1% to the right. So it's going that way. So that means I'm gonna to need to be about two inches out on the left. All right, we're ready to hit that putt. So now it's just seven feet. I've got everything lined up. So all I gotta do is line up to my ball. Try to hit seven feet. I'm visualizing seven feet after one second. Thousand. Stepping in. And hit it. And now I have my feedback right away. What would we say? That ball is more than one foot. I hit my speed too hard. Now the other thing then I can do is I do have my ball marker handy. We can test our read just a little bit. So I can pull the app right out and go ahead. Let's give that a read. It is two inches uphill. And actually it's telling me that there is no, there is nothing there. Now there is about 1%. I moved it up a little bit. You know, I said, hey, there's gotta be some slope. So it is 1%. So it's telling me it's a left edge putt because it's a little bit more uphill than I thought. So what it's saying is I, I was probably playing it both a little bit too far out and I hit it a little bit too hard. I'm about two and a half feet by. So not an awful putt, but as I'm going through, see how I'm working on my, my feedback. It's like, all right, hey, let's try to get that speed dialed in. And now I've also learned two inches up. I've learned also it's just too much, uh, too much break that I'm playing on that putt. So I'm learning as I'm going. This can go on for another 10, 15 minutes. And when we put all of this together, I can spend an hour out here on the practice screen. Now, obviously we've spread out. There's nobody out here. Be respectful at your course and use the space you have. That's one of the reasons I love it here at Stony. We have three greens to work with, but you're gonna get some feedback. You're gonna get what you need and you can do it in an hour. You can practice smarter and you can get better and know that you're getting better, which is the key. And that's what pros do that AMs don't do. And that's what a practice session would look like to me. So. 
you have any questions about it, please leave a comment down below. We will have other areas of the game. We're gonna do some short game. We're gonna do some full swing, talk about those areas, what those practice sessions look like. We're also gonna talk about warming up for a round. So don't miss out on that. Click that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.